In the end, there will be no one left. We are no longer innocent. We are lost from this world. From home. We no longer believe in such things. Are you all right? We're ready for you to cut the cake. Wow, these are incredible. Yes, it was uh, an incredible time. You're probably wondering who this fine group of gentlemen are. Well, I'll tell you. That there, that's Jacobs. He was one of the finest soldiers I ever served with. A brave man, he never stood down from any fight. And he was one hell of a man. Hey, what's up, you apex sweating slay? It's good to see you, Scriven, you old dog. I'd first served with Jacobs in the army, but then he sent me a request to join the Tank Corps, a new program they were launching in 1916. How could I refuse? I'd be driving cars all my life. But not all. Scribble! Sir, Tones in. Come on, you mess all the fun. Where the hell is Jacobs at? He owes me money. All artillery! Fire! Yoo hoo, Fraudy! Where are you? I beat you fair and square at poker, my friend. Don't worry about me, sir. I'm ready to do my bit for King and Country. What's this on you? Find forward and reverse when you're told you'll do all right for me. Grab those, would you? Come and meet Big Bess. Woman of your dreams. Woman of my dreams? Do a leaper, is that you? She was damn beautiful. Black Bess. And our new driver, boys. Holy shit, are you got to pigeon? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Oh, there you are, Jacobs. Finally. She's Looking after like pigeons, I see. Finch. A new pastime Finch. of yours? Good to see you. Yeah, well, I followed the stage my own coup, you know. Mind your business, old manners. Welcome to the tech corps. She'll look after you, yeah? Don't worry, bro. We've got the chemistry of Dumbia, Nababo, and Jovino. Nothing can stop us. Our orders are to punch through the German line. Destroying artillery positions as we go. Jacobs! Yes, sir. Oh, Christ, that's heavy. Hmm. RT to go forward? Perhaps. We'll advance on the French town of Cambrai. Oh, where I have been assured there is wine, women, and song. So you should enjoy that, huh? Right, scrivens on kick off. Can't mess this. <laughs> We were a fine body of men, brought together by the greatest of teamwork. Fucking hell, Scriven, get a grip, you fucking tit! Even in the early days, I'd have taken a bullet for any of them. 
May Lord have mercy on our souls. Our mission was to push back the German lines and make it to Sergeant Edgley, a famed medic. We need his skills here. Oh Christ, not that old buffoon. So we marched on to Cambrai to get to Sergeant Edgley. We were then known as the Ugandan Pigeons, the finest tank regiment the world had ever seen. Over the top, you scrabs! Dreaded whistle sounded. We knew this could be over before it even began. Black Bear smashed through the opposition defences like a barbell on FIFA 14 across the gulf in the halfway line. But there was one huge problem. She was mechanically unstable, perhaps ahead of her time didn't really hit us until we made it to the very top of the hill. Load the guns, go there, load the guns! Ah shit, the clutch is gone. Jake has passed me that spanner or we're gonna get overrun. Quick! Here's the spanner, Are you spanner. Boys, they're on top of the tank, they're crawling over us like ants. We need to get rid of them. If only my brother was here, maybe he could bring in an airstrike. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Where is that damn Ugandan pigeon when you need it? We need help! We need help! Jake has released the pigeon! Go! Oh, for fuck's sake, man, how have you dropped that? How have you dropped that? Fucking butter fingers! It was at that moment I knew I had to channel my inner or black and catch that bird out of the sky. The Ugandan pigeon, he called to me. I looked him right in the eyes and, well, Like a beacon of hope, I picked up that damn pigeon and prepared to launch him out of the tube. Scriven, release that damn pigeon! Release the pigeon! That is an order, son! Do you understand me? Sir. Sir. I can't believe you dropped that, Jacobs. Absolute piece of cake. Oh, all right, mate. This must have been the fucking looks, all right? That Ugandan pigeon was our only chance. Without artillery support, we were sitting ducks. It needed to fly back to base with its limited walnut-sized brain and make it back in one piece. Sir, Scriven and Jacobs are in trouble. We need to send help immediately. Prepare the guns. We couldn't quite believe it, but somehow that suicidal tactic had saved us. We didn't even need Edgley for a revive. And real scenes. Our commanding officer had been hurt in the attack. He knew his time was up. He didn't tell us anything. And Black Bess was hurt. You've done hurt more than Edgley after done. the last FIFA update. No. Enough I to make him uninstall the game. But our lives were still in danger. Oh. 
Best kept breaking down. Her engine was fried. The spark plug's gone. We were sitting ducks for any artillery that came our way. Artillery! Drive! Drive! To Valhalla! Bess was broken, and myself and Jacobs prepared for one last stand. When I awoke, I only found McManus. Jacobs was nowhere to be seen. I'd lost him. Perhaps he was captured by the Germans, I don't know. It was all the days. Oi, sauerkraut, what the fuck have you done with my Icelandic brother, Jordan Jacobs? Yo, give us the time, go right now. Is that a caustic gas grenade? Oh, looky, looky, I'm going to go close to it and set it off. Sorry, bitch. Black Bass was gone. So was my hopes. I didn't know where Jacobs was. But I knew I still had to manage to get to Edgley. Perhaps Jacobs would meet me there if he hadn't been captured by the Germans. Myself, McManus, headed off. Lieutenant J. Edgley? Oh, God. oh God, who's this pillock? It's better be important, Private. If you look at the beaches, you can see I'm a very busy man. Captain T. Scriven, he needs uh, artillery support from the beach, sir. Follow me. Okay, follow me. We'll show their advance and clear them a path. Lieutenant Edgley was one of the best medics out there. He'd I received legendary status from the British day. Army after his exploits at the Somme. Yes, hello, my name is Sergeant Gupta, and Edgley was a great medic. He punched me up when I was really poorly. Edgley had fought in some of the worst places the war had to offer. The Battle of Passchendaele, the Battle of Mud. Yes. Sergeant Edgley, best men again. I was down and there in both the battle of the Somme and Ashendale. And there he came, ran across the field with terrain. These battles have taken their toll on Sergeant Edgley. He was never the same after Ashendale. But he was still the legendary medic they all made him out to be. Thanks for getting me off that beach. Although, I'm not sure how I feel about you peppering your own men with those artillery support. You think I give a flying fuck who lives or dies? I'll just revive them. I heard you needed my men. I need your help. Fuck it now, what is it this time, Scrivens? I've lost Jacobs. They've taken him prisoner. They've taken Jacobs? Our tank got ambushed, and they took Jacobs from the fight. We were overrun. I just... I couldn't find him. I was dazed when I woke up, and... I don't know where they've taken him. I'll send scouts. Luckily... Some of Edgley's informants had overheard German communications saying that they were moving British prisoners to desert work camps at Sinai. It was our only hope. We formed a plan that we'd need aerial reconnaissance and fighter support from my brother, a famed RAF commander.
Now I must tell you something about my brother. He's not the most honest man, especially when it comes to getting what he wants. I have nothing left to bet, you idiot. The plane. <laughs> That's rich. <laughs> oh, why the hell not? I've got you beaten anyway. Uh, yeah. What have you got? Hmm? I've got myself three of a kind. Aces, <laughs> you jammy bastard. Wipe your mouth, Wipe Jamie. Your mouth. You just lost. Wipe your mouth with my fist in a minute. But you know, I'll be taking that plane anyway. What the bloody hell? You lost, I beat you. Mm. The thing is, Rackham, it's a very beautiful aeroplane and you're kind of a jackass. I beat you fair and square, goddammit. Stay the hell away from my kind. Oh, you bastard. You can't do this to me. I beat you. I beat you. My name's the Clyde Jay Screw. I'm a pilot and a gambler. I'm George Rackham. I'm George Bloody Rackham. Listen to me. You bastard. Keep off my aeroplane. If you asked me to name my biggest fault, I'd have to tell you. I'm just not a very honest person. Who the hell are you? I'm Wilson, by the way. You must be George Rackham. Sure, I'm Rackham. I'm your guy. <laughs> How did you fall for that one, Look, scrub? Let's get this kite up in the air. You're George Rackham, son of the 4th Earl of Windsor. That's right. Hip, hip, go, me. My brother would receive his first distinguished flying cross over a raid on a German base in the east of France. Ah, to hell with base! <laughs> Pull up. Let's get us some pictures of that base. <laughs> These pictures were invaluable to the war effort and helped shut down German munitions transport across the region. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Lieutenant Jay Scriven would go on to be one of the best pilots in the RAF. He shot down over a hundred planes. <laughs> get good we move. Oh no, a victory roll, what a fucking show off. Just like shooting wild brats back home, kid. Lieutenant, your brother called. He, he needs your help. What the hell does that idiot want? He says he's going to come and talk to you in person, but... Spit it out, man. It's top secret. Top secret, my ass. Just tell me what he said. He says that he's lost Jacobs, one of the best men in his unit, and that he needs you to assemble a task force to help him clear out the skies. This won't be easy, and highly illegal. But he needs us more than ever. Dangerous and illegal? Sounds like my kind of jam. Sir, I don't think you're taking me seriously here. If you go ahead with this under the radar, you could get kicked from the army. We'd lose one of our best pilots. They'd never get rid of me. I'm the best pilot in the RAF. I sat there and waited for that plonker. Where's my brother? He better have the kettle on. I'm absolutely pu- There you are, you old fuck. How have you been? Well, you old bastard. Looks like you need my help. You're the best pilot out there. I need you. I uh, know. There's no one else I can trust. Don't worry. I'm in. And so, with my brother and Edgley in tow, we prepared for our invasion of the desert work camp that held Jacobs. Jamie took to the skies, but first, we would have to take out the coastal defences. Attack! 
chase squad who storm up on me. We're going in. The planes danced around in the sky like birds. Some would even say Ugandan pigeons. Oh sauerkraut, it appears your wing is missing. Oopsies. My brother squadron ripped through the enemy defences. They were more effective than perfectly timed finesse shots. To get us to this desert work camp, I had to sign our squad up for the Sinai Desert Invasion. It wasn't ideal, but it was our only way of getting there under the letter of the law. The plan was simple on paper. All we had to do was make it behind enemy lines, steal some intel on where they'd moved the prisoners, and fight out the rest of the Sinai battle. What could go wrong? Well, in classic Scriven luck, the camp was overrun with enemies. We had to make it down there and steal the intel on the we wouldn't know where the prisoners were being held. This would be for nothing. There was just one thing in our way, an armored behemoth race towards the desert camp. My brother took the skies, whereas myself and Edley's men fought on her. I rode atop my famed steed, Basil, and we charged into action. My brother flew unrivalled in the skies. No one could match his precision, speed and accuracy. And they paid the ultimate price. a small task force up into a position where we thought the codes were being held. Keep fighting you lackeys, we need to find that intel. <laughs> we have taken objective George. The point is seems we a bit more off that we could shoot. The enforcements kept coming. I managed to lead a small task force up to the right of the base, where in a chest we found a book containing the location of the prisoners. Inside was prisoner 06969, J. Jacobs. I had my man. Meanwhile, Edgley was fighting valiantly in the south side of the base. The sandstorm was setting in and we lost communication with each other. Follow me, men. We're headed back into that storm. Push them back. Who wants a serenity today? Your you get a revive. You get a revive. You get a revive. You all get a revive. A sandstorm was not enough to stop my brother. But it did stop a lot of our men. Including Edgley. I never saw him again. Take cover, you know. That day, a part of England died. A part of me died. We lost the best medic. You England. killed me off. Really? The, the medic? Good luck getting a revive now, you're back. Oh, boo boo. Anyway, moving on. Back to that Vancouver actor Jacobs. Well, Intel had told us that he tried to make an escape attempt from the Desert World Camp. So, I set off on Basil to find him. Why is the horse so hawk's speed? I can't keep shooting. Fucking that. There's so much help. When I finally reached the top of the mountains, the fighting was thicker than it had been in the desert. I couldn't believe it. And now I didn't have Jamie's fighter support on my side. It looks like he's going down. Yeah. 
Even Basil was struggling. He was built like a brick shithouse like Akin Fenwa. It didn't stop me though. I'd come this far. I wasn't stopping now. I pushed through the forest. The work camp was on the other side. Outgunned, outmanned, I fought to the very last stand. And they just kept coming. Over and over. I couldn't hold out forever. But hope spurred me on. But hope doesn't protect you against kamikaze tactics. The bombers veered off to the left. And bombed their own mountainside. Causing an avalanche. Stronger than Vic's arse. When I awoke, it was almost dusk. I could barely breathe. Ash filled my lungs. Dread filled my soul. But I'd come this far. Hope spurred me on. was down there somewhere. I had to find him. So I went down into that hell. It was my only choice. Ah, the war is almost over. I'm going to survive it. Jacobs was here somewhere, whether it was inside or outside in the fields. I thought I'd check inside. Die! Die! Die, you hacking noobs! I will kill you, and then kill you again. I still think about that field. Every day. I searched the whole prison, but I couldn't find him. I'd started giving in to the small hope that perhaps Jacobs had maybe escaped. And then... No! No! Jacobs, you can't die on me! <laughs> you owe me money! <laughs> Think of all the Rocket League we could have played together! I could have taught you how to fly, how to hit the ball off the wall, and how to do the power donut slides. He never got all that. And here I am, Steve. Who decides such things? Requiesque, Man Catapaches, Edgley, and Jacobs. One day, all this will be over. The war to end all wars will be won by one side or the other. 
guns will rust, grass will grow, and there'll be nothing left of any of this. The land will heal itself, as everything does in the end. We'll be long gone by then, but maybe not forgotten. History only remembers one in a thousand of us, and the future will be filled with stories of who we were and what we did, how we lived, how we fought, and how we died. When this is all over and the war is won, they will remember us. But until that day comes, we will stand, we will look death in the eye, and we will fight. Now, you're probably wondering what happened to my brother, feigned RAFA. Mayday, Mayday, I'm going down! And I knew I had to find him. Find what I had left. I'd lost so much. 